And this one is Ga one of Gareth's favorites. Lord, the light of your love is shining. Shine, Jesus, shine. Father, we pray for everybody here that they'll feel really comfortable. But Father God, we pray that you will be honored here tonight. Father, we thank you for Easter and all that it means to us. But Father, we also thank you for this stand that Gareth's making tonight. It's really brave and it's really bold, especially in this day and age. So God, we just ask you, be with Gareth. and Be with him as he speaks in a, in a short time, Lord, and be with us every single one of us here you know each one of us inside out whether we like it or not you know us so father god we just pray do what you do best in people's lives we pray in jesus name amen, amen. <laughs> well, it's really nice to see you all welcome to 
Uh, Gareth, I'm really glad that Gareth turned up. It's always a bit tricky on these baptismal services that everyone comes, but if Gareth didn't come, then it'd be a bit of a tricky, uh, tricky evening. Welcome to Gareth, and welcome to all your friends and family, and welcome to all you uh, regular church people who uh, have come as well as you always come every Sunday. What I'm going to do is um, just read a couple of uh, passages from the Bible about baptism because some of you may have come here tonight and thought, what the heck is going on? I'm not going to ask you to put your hands up if you thought that, but uh, you, know, you might have come into to church and thought, what are they doing? What is going on? Well, everything we do here in church is based on the Bible. Everything we do in church is based on what we believe Jesus has called us to do. So we've not made up a whole load of beliefs. We just follow Jesus. It's as simple as that. And on this Easter Sunday, Christians remember, and we've celebrated today, that Jesus, though he, was, he died on Good Friday, he rose again today. And for us today, it's our Resurrection Sunday. It's the day that we remember that Jesus died and rose again. And we're pretty excited today. So I don't know what you've been up to today, but I was in church this morning. Then unfortunately, I watched a bit of football, which anyone that knows that I support Aston Villa knows it's not really been a good afternoon for me. But you know what? That doesn't matter at all because Jesus is so much more important than my football team. Although when Liverpool scored the second goal, you might not have realized that. Okay, we're going to look uh, in the Bible firstly at Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. And this is the baptism of Jesus. So Jesus was baptized. Um, so here we go. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And why do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this for the fulfillment of all righteousness. So John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven opened and saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And you see some uh, uh, quite amazing things in that passage that John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And Jesus went into the water with John and came out of the water. And I love that part and it really excites me because this is more than just a sprinkling. And I know some traditions, and I'm respectful to other traditions, do a bit of a baptismal sprinkling on the head. Forget that when you come to a Baptist church. We get them, and we get them right under. And this is dramatic. And Gareth said to me this morning, he said, I've learned how to hold my breath. <laughs> he can hold his breath for 20 seconds underwater. So Andrew, when we baptize at Gareth later, we've got 19 seconds. Uh, until we bring him back up again. But when John baptized Jesus, which was just an awesome occasion, John baptized Jesus and took Jesus under the water in the river and then brought him back up again. And uh, the Spirit came upon him in a powerful way. This is what we ask for tonight, that, that God would really touch Gareth, touch, do an amazing work in Gareth's life. And your, your family we pray we'll see Gareth as he grows and grows and grows as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed about being a Christian. It's not weak. It's not sissy. It's not girly to be a Christian. In fact, it's probably the hardest thing you'll ever do. So, why are we baptizing Gareth? I'm not John the Baptist. I am John, but I'm not the John the Baptist. But later on then in that passage, in Matthew 28... We hear the words of Jesus. Now, these are the words of Jesus to his disciples. And we believe that uh, when Jesus left and he went to heaven, all those people that followed Jesus from 2,000 years ago to now are Jesus' disciples. It's great, isn't it? 
2,000 years, people have been following Jesus. And still today, here in Caldecott, people are still following Jesus and doing what he says. So here we are, Matthew 28 and verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, this is Jesus talking to his disciples. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he says to them, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and share the good news of Jesus to whoever you meet, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And that's what we're doing tonight. And when Gareth, uh, in a little while, goes into the pool, I'll say to him, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. And we're just following the words of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. So that's what we're doing here. We've not just made it up. But it's something that Jesus has taught us to do. So we're going to follow Jesus uh, as best we possibly can. So I've got a whole list of songs here. And the next one, the band are going to sing. And we really do thank the band. Normally, when you come to church, the band are on there. Now, I know, because we have wooden blocks and everything, I know it would be tricky for them to be on there tonight, um, especially with all that electrical stuff. So we really do thank the band for being cramped up in the corner. But the band are going to sing to us in your freedom. Is that right? Brilliant. And uh, we're going to take up an offering. Now, if you've not come prepared to give, that's cool. We don't really want your money, but we do need a bit of money to keep the church going from week to week. So we will send the offering bags around. But please, if you are a visitor or a guest, just let the bags pass you by. And please don't be embarrassed at all about that. But the band are going to sing to us. Are the words going to come up, Bethan, on the screen? The words will come up on the screen. And just listen to the band, they're lovely, they are.
Father God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much for your presence here. And we pray, Father God, now as we uh, receive this offering, that it be used wisely in this, your church. It will be used so that many more people will come to hear about you and grow to love you. We pray now, Father God, as Gareth comes and he tells us his story, we pray, dear God, that you will calm his nerves and that you'll just give him the ability to speak clearly you allow his mind to think clearly as well. And Lord, just be with him now as he comes and shares. We pray this in your dear name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Oh. <laughs> quite a few of you. Um, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Um, well, today's a special day for me, really. Not just because of the baptism, but uh, it's uh, three years to the day since I started coming to Bethany's church uh, this morning. And I vividly remember the first service, because I remember coming in and I was like, oh, there's, a, there's drums and there's a guitar, there's a band, there's no choir. <laughs> not, not like you see on telly. <laughs> And I think it was within the first song that um, you got flags out and you started waving them around and running around the church and I thought, what on earth is going on here? I was like, what, what is this? Uh, but obviously I liked it because I came back the next week and I kept coming back. Now I haven't religiously been coming every single week, but um, there's a reason I've been coming back and I know that now. Um, it's been a long three years, a lot of research, a lot of uh, hard work, a lot of reading. Um, and I suppose it, came, it just came to me when I was laid in bed and I was like, do you know what? I'm not supposed to have all the answers and I never will have all the answers. No matter how long, not even on my deathbed, when I'm old and grey, hopefully, I won't have all the answers. So. Uh, so I came to peace with that and I've come, I've come to terms with it. I was like, do you know what? It's time to take the plunge. I believe in Jesus and Jesus is Lord and he's my Lord. Um, and I'm, this is my public announcement to, to the world that this is what I want. Am I doing okay? You're doing great. I've done announcements, right, but this is by far the most nerve-wracking I've ever... I feel like I'm about to sit an exam. I feel so... Uh, although my brother, my brother Chris did, uh, did help lessen my nerves. He said, he had a look at the pool and he said, are you going to have a bath? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not having a bath, Chris. Um, my upbringing, uh, well... It hasn't, been, it hasn't been difficult by any stretch of imagination compared to, to, to what some people go through. It hasn't been difficult. It hasn't been easy uh, through my parents getting divorced. I mean, I had to grow up very quick. Um, but I didn't miss out on the childhood. Um, I didn't feel that I was missing out on anything. 
Well, I was uh, trying to fill a void in my, an empty void in my life with material things like uh, Xbox games. Um, that's an old habit, and I'm still trying to get that out. But um, alcohol, never did drugs. Um, but earthly things and possessions, and I know now that, that the only thing that what I needed was Jesus. Not earthly possessions. They'll never fill the void. Um, which is why now, especially after leaving work, I feel a lot less stressed. Um, yeah, completely stress-free and calm and at peace. Finally, I feel at peace. So this is a perfect time to get baptised. Um, I think I've always had a, a notion. I've always known that there was something there. Uh, <laughs> From uh, from when I was younger, when I was younger, I had uh, I had nits when I was in school. <laughs> right. right, not getting baptised. <laughs> <still got them>. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, and uh, I, I, um, I wasn't sure whether I was going to say this, but I am anyway. Yeah, I had nits, and I remember saying to Mum and Rachel, I remember this. Uh, Mum used to be going at my hair with that really horrible comb. Those combs hurt. It wasn't a nice, you never used to be nice about it. Ragging my hair and, uh, to get them out. And I used to say, whether it's because it hurt, I used to say, leave them alone, there's God's creatures. And if they want to live in my head, then so be it. <laughs> she didn't listen. <laughs> They've got, that's, that was it. They've got to live somewhere. Um... Recently, uh, I've, we, uh, I've, uh, I've, been, it's, I've had a, a really uh, difficult test, really hard to get over, um, really unexpected, uh, through the death of my nephew, uh, Daniel, and I praise God that uh, Naomi's here today, his mum. She, uh, she was a really good mum, really good mum to him. Um, Despite what she's been through in the past, she, she changed my perspective and my opinions on herself, and uh, she was great. And it was, a ho- it was horrible at the time, really horrible. I don't understand why it happened. I won't understand why it happened, and I don't have the answers. But I'm always here for you, and we'll all always be here for you. And uh, you'll never be forgotten, and you'll be a great mum once again. You really will. And uh, but it was a big, te- it was a hard test, and I did question, I doubted, and uh, I was, I thought, why, why has this happened? This is such an awful, a young, innocent baby being taken from the world. But God works in mysterious ways, and these things, th- these things happen, and we don't have the answers. We're not supposed to have the answers. I've come to terms with that, and my faith got me through the hard times, the hard. Last couple of weeks, uh, last certain months of this year, definitely. Um, yeah, it's been five months. So, um, but I, yeah. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming, all my family. I didn't expect so many of you to be here, to be honest. I thought three or four would be a good turnout, but it's... <laughs> and I was really worried about seating. I didn't think there'd be enough seats in the church, but. I prayed about it, and we've got enough seats. And I'd just like to thank all of you for your prayers, um, not only for today, but your ongoing prayers through the Daniel situation, um, praying for my exams, praying for me over the years. Um, they've gone a long way and helped me along, my, on, along the road. Um, and I feel blessed to be part of the church, and I, I, I'd love to get involved more <coughs> with the young people. Um, setting up what we what we're starting now can really snowball on and become something big and great, and I'm really excited about that. And I know that Sam, Lily, and Amy are as well. So thank you all. Um, I have a prayer that got me through. It's got me through a, a lot of um, hard times. I know that Terry knows this one, and Vicky. It's uh, the prayer of serenity. So if you feel that you you want to shut your eyes, you can. I mean, or if you want to stare at me some more. That's fine. Um, but it goes something like this. Um, 
God grants us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. One day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as we would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if we surrender to his will, that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, I, what can I say after that, Gareth? Uh, it was absolutely fantastic, wasn't it? I had no idea what Gareth was going to say. Uh, perhaps you didn't have a lot of ideas, but um, I believe that God has really spoken through you uh, into, into my life and I'm sure into our lives as well. We're going to sing uh, Gareth's next favourite song, uh, which is How Great Is Our God. And if we stand up and we'll sing that all together. Thank you, Gareth. Thank you. 
Now, in a, in a couple of minutes, uh, Gareth is going to be baptised. Uh, he'll be baptised because, because of his testimony and his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. No one's forced him to be baptised. No one's twisted his arm. No one's paid him. He just does it because he wants to follow Jesus. But just for a few moments, I'd like to share with you uh, some thoughts, if that would be okay. Um, now, I've chosen a particular passage in the Bible from John chapter 11. You might want to turn to it, you might not. Uh, and it's when Jesus is confronted by Mary and Martha, and uh, the occasion is Lazarus has just died. Now, it's, a, it's an odd um, subject for a baptismal service, but there's one particular uh, verse that I'd like to draw your attention to and just think about it just a little bit. Lazarus is dead in the tomb. He's been there for about four days, completely dead. Now, Jesus is talking to these two women, Mary and Martha. And Mary um, is off doing something, but Martha, this time, is with Jesus and talking to Jesus. And the particular verse is in uh, John 11, uh, verse 25, when Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And then Jesus says to Martha, do you believe this? And I was particularly captivated by it because Jesus is talking about himself being the resurrection and the life. And he's not even died. He's not even come back to life again. But he's telling everyone, one day I will die. As Lazarus has died. But one day I will come back to life again. And I will spend all eternity doing stuff forever. Now... I can't get my head around it completely because I'm from Birmingham and I can't quite understand uh, all of the verses in the Bible. But what I can try and do is just share them with you and then you can do exactly what you want with them. Now, a little question. If Jesus is who he says he is, then he needs a little bit more care and attention. If Jesus is really who he says he is, he needs us, me, perhaps you, your friends, family, people that you do life with, to take a little bit more notice of him. So that's the first thought. And a lot of people go along in life, as I did until I became a Christian when I was 21. How old are you, Gareth? 22, a little bit older than me, but I became a Christian when I was 21, and I just lived my life completely oblivious of anything else except number one. Who was number one? Me. All I thought about was what I was going to do, when I was going to do it, and who I was going to do it with. And do you know where it got me? I'll tell you where it got me. It just got me going around and around, and around, and I can go on, and around, I could do this for hours, it just takes up time and everyone thinks it was a really long sermon, but you know what, you can just go, you can do that in life, me and James were going to a rugby match, James is my son the other day, and we went round one round about three times, and this is how I, this is how I drive, I just go around, and around, I said to James, which one is it? I don't know, he says. So we just keep going round. And you know, cars follow you. <laughs> they do, because they think you know where you're going. And you'll find this in life, is that people that go round and around, other people follow them. So you don't just go round in circles on your own. But amazingly, perhaps people that are younger than you, friends, family members, they follow you. And they think, oh, that looks exciting, what he or she are doing. And do you know what? You find yourself just going round and around. And I'm going to encourage you tonight to think about breaking that cycle. Whatever your, you think your cycle of life is, I'm going to encourage you tonight to think that Jesus might help you to break that cycle and to transform 
your life like you've never had it transformed before. There's no gimmicks about church today. People that go to church and follow Jesus, it's not an easy road. It doesn't mean you're going to be rich. It doesn't mean you're going to have lots of money. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're going to be healthy every moment of every day. But do you know what it does mean? Is that Jesus is going to come and live in your hearts. And he's going to help you through every step of the way. So if Jesus is really who he says he is, he needs our full attention. And he needs you and I to really seek after him and try and find him. But if he isn't who he said he is, and I've had lots of intelligent people come up to me and say, I can disprove Jesus. I can prove that there is no God. Stephen Hawkins and Richard Dawkins and anyone else that's got a kins in the end of their name, they can try and disprove that God is God. But you know, all they end up doing is just criticizing the church. That isn't an argument. You can criticize me and the church, and you'll probably find us to be a little bit cracked in certain places. But I tell you what, you won't find any faults with Jesus. I can tell you that 100%. You see, when we look at Jesus and we look at his life, we, we see that there is no scandal. Hey, politicians, there's scandal. Football players, scandal. Religious leaders, let's be honest about it, scandal. Jimmy Savile, I so am disappointed with Jimmy Savile, aren't you? I thought he was going to fix everything. Jim Davison, I don't know, but I'm a fan of Big Break. I watch it on Challenge all the time. I don't watch that anymore. I watch Bullseye. Don't you watch Challenge? It's the best program out there. You've got to watch it. But you know, people will let you down and they've looked for scandal in Jesus' life. Last temptation of Christ. Oh, that was so popular. But it wasn't based on any truth. And there are many, many other films like it. See, Jesus came to this earth and he loved people. Can you, do you know anyone that was perfect that had ultimate love for all types of people. I want to tell you tonight, and this is a little bit of a, an in-house secret, so don't tell too many people because the church isn't quite big enough for everyone at the moment. But this is a secret, that Jesus loves you. And it doesn't matter what you've done. And it doesn't matter where you've been. And it doesn't matter about your past. And it doesn't even matter what you're doing in the present. Jesus loves you. You don't have to be as good looking as me. That's a joke. <laughs> you can never be as good looking as Gareth. That's the truth. <laughs> Gareth. Sharp. With his two t-shirts on. Sharp. Do you know why he's wearing two t-shirts? Do you want to know? Oh, you've been wondering this, haven't you? He gave a great testimony, and you're looking at him thinking, why is he wearing two T-shirts? He's got a bit of a nipple problem. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't want to bring it up. So now we've found out. Knits. So the two T-shirts, fine. Everything is fine. So with us, you'll find faults. But with Jesus, you'll find no faults. He loved everyone. He cared for all. He proved who he was through the miracles that he performed. He was honest. He was honorable. And he didn't show any favoritism. If you had money or you were poor, if you were big or you were small, he loved you all. And do you know what? Today, I don't know what you were expecting about church but I can guarantee it probably wasn't this. It probably wasn't this. But I know that when you go out from this place, that God will have spoken something into your life. And you can hide from God. You can run away from God. That's fine. But God is a gentleman. And when you decide to open your door to him, 
He'll come in and change and transform your life. Let's look at this verse just quickly because I think, and you think I'm probably biased, that Jesus really is who he said he was. And Jesus really will do what he said he will do. This one verse in uh, John 11, uh, verse 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live. There's a lot of people that are alive, but not living today. Is that fair to say? There's a lot of people that just exist in their lives. And they blame every single other person that's out there. It's your fault I'm the way I am. It's my past. It's my parents. It's my uncle. It's my brother. It's the world. It's the ozone layer. It's E-numbers. It's food. We blame every single person. Don't we? It's, my f- it's your fault I'm this fat. When I started in the church, I was 12 stone. I could run marathons. You lovely old ladies, you give me the cakes. It's your fault. It's not my fault for eating them. And do you know what? We blame every single other person. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live. Jesus doesn't say here who comes to church. He doesn't say here who gives money to the poor. Do you know Comet Relief and Children in Need? Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? They raise absolutely millions for charities. But do you know the people that give me included doesn't make me a Christian. Doing good works, helping an old lady across the... Sorry, that's my wife. Helping an old lady... Where's an old... I need... There's an old lady. I see your hand there. I see an old lady there. Helping an old lady across the road. Um, you're not. She has a scooter anyway. She gets across with that. Oh, you don't? It's been stolen? No, can't get it out. Can't get it out. The weather? Problems with the weather? Oh, hubby. Yeah, let's not go there. (laughs) Helping an old lady across the road, if you can find one, that won't make you a Christian. But what Jesus says here is, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live. And Gareth comes here tonight to testify that he believes in Jesus. It's as simple as that. It's not complicated. He believes in Jesus. He believes that Jesus is who he said he was and will do what he said he would do. And Gareth isn't going to exist anymore. He's going to live. And Jackie quoted a verse from John chapter 10 and verse 10. Where Jesus said, I have come so that you might have life and have life in all its fullness. Please don't just exist through life. Don't exist through life blaming everyone else, complaining and moaning. We live in that culture in Britain. But I want to encourage you to find life in Jesus. And find life in all its fullness. And then Jesus says to Martha, and you can read all of this if you've got time in the week. Jesus says to Martha, do you believe this? It's as simple as that. And I haven't got time, but I've written so much stuff on my piece of paper. The amount of times that Jesus says to people, believe in me, believe in me, believe in me. Don't believe in me, but believe in Jesus. And Jesus says to Martha, do you believe this? And it's a question, I'm going to take a little bit of courage in my hand and say to you, do you believe in Jesus? Don't answer me, don't put your hands up, don't call out. Well, Martha answers, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Martha believes Many people in this church believe. Gareth believes. Even the little baby that's spitting but (laughs) might might, may believe. It's fantastic, isn't it? I love Heckless. It's absolutely brilliant. (laughs) Oh, bless her. Very, very nice to see you. Do you know what we had this morning? We had our first infant baptism. (laughs) We had the pool open this morning. Little Danny, how old is Danny, Terry? He's two. (laughs) Little Danny, after the service, comes running forward, 
dodges a few people, dives straight in. <laughs> well, he'll have to wait till he's a bit older to be baptised a second time. But that's all from me. I hope it's been helpful. Um, it can be challenging, can be thought-provoking, but it isn't something to be messed about with. If you're going to follow Jesus, follow him wholeheartedly. Don't sit on the fence, don't mess about, don't waver from one to the other, but follow Jesus wholeheartedly. And I tell you what, as a Christian, you can have more fun being a Christian than not being a Christian. People say to me, if I become a Christian, John, I have to give up all of these things. So I say, well, what, what things are you talking about? Well, you know, all of these fun things. Well, what, what fun things do you do that I can't do? And the person couldn't tell me. Well, well I, I, I can't get drunk off my face. Well, is that the best thing for you? I can't take drugs. Well, do you really want to take drugs? I can't have sex with anyone. Well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> well, you know, all the other stuff I can't do. I said, tell me. What, what's so bad about being a Christian? What's all the stuff you can't do? I have so much fun being a Christian. And do you know you're part of a, a church where people love each other, support one another, encourage one another. You can't get a better place than that. And I've done all the stuff. And you can talk to me afterwards and I can tell you some stories. But we haven't got time, Gareth, have we? Because Gareth needs a spiritual bath. And we're going to give him that. So um, if you want to take, um, if you want to take some pictures... If you want to take some pictures, please stand around the edges. You'd be very, very welcome to do that. We're going to move the pulpit across. Uh, Andrew's going to take his shoes off and different things. Will you help me move the pulpit? And, um, and all that will happen is Gareth will come down this side and then he'll come up the other side. So you'd be welcome to... Uh, to want to uh, just take some pictures of him while he's jealous. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to just ask uh, Gareth a couple of questions before he's baptised. Gareth, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yes, absolutely. And have you asked Jesus to take away all the things that you've ever done wrong? Yes, sir. Fantastic. And do you want to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all the questions I've got for you, Gareth. If you... Um, Hold your hands together, that's it. And then say, Gareth, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I baptise you. heard Gareth's story and um, I'm sure that we've all got different stories that we can share but I'd like us to just spend perhaps a minute in reflection thinking about where we might stand right at this moment before God right at this moment just think for a moment about where you might stand before God and after that minute then I'll just pray I'll pray for Gareth and I'll pray for us all, then we'll sing, and, uh, and then we'll have some refreshments together. So um, don't worry about the children. I, I love to hear children's noise, and, uh, and that's fantastic. But just be quiet for uh, a minute or so. Then we'll pray for Gareth, and then I'll pray for you all.
Father God, we come before you now and we uh, pray for Gareth as he's just been baptised and he begins his journey um, with you, with you at the, in the steering wheel, with you at the head. And we pray, dear God, that you will be all that Gareth needs through the, the mountaintop experiences, but also through the valley times as well, the hard times and the low times. Father God, we pray that Gareth will be all that you need him to be as well as he follows you every single day of his life and we commit him to you. We pray, Father God, for every single person that's here, from the very smallest child to the oldest adults. I commit them all into your hands and we've all got a story to tell. We've all got a journey that we're on. And I pray, Father God, that if you have spoken into people's lives, that they will not uh, close their ears off, but they will listen and respond to you. We thank you, dear God, for your love and for your care to every single one of us. And I pray that you will help us, you'll protect us, and that you'll encourage us. We pray this in your holy name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Okay, what's the last song? Here? Thank you. We're going to sing now, Thank You for the Cross, and that's our last uh, song. Do you want to go and get... You want to sing this, okay? Well, it's your service, whatever, isn't it? Do you want to... No. Would you uh, stand to sing uh, Thank You for the Cross? <laughs>
I hope you feel better uh, now it's the end of the service than at the beginning. It can be quite a tense time, can't it, Gareth? And uh, it's done now. Uh, it's the beginning for Gareth. But it might be the beginning for you as well. So it's not just for Gareth and for me. It might be for you as well. So please uh, talk to Gareth, talk to myself and others uh, you'd be very, very welcome to do that. Please stay behind for refreshments. We've got loads of cakes, biscuits, and other things. So please stay behind, or else Gareth will have to take them all home. And uh, he wouldn't want to do that, would you? <laughs> At the end of the service, we always say something called the grace together, and that will come up uh, on the screen there. So uh, let's say the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship 